he was impressed by the possibilities during a certain window of time for the development of Yiddish culture in the Soviet Union when it was being promulgated, supported uh, by the Soviet authorities. And that's what he kept hearing from his colleagues that were there, Markish and, and, and the others, in their letters and when they saw him, saying, listen, we have our own publishing houses, we have our own union, it's, we have school books for children, we have, and uh, the Azerbaijan, and the government is completely supporting it, and it's a thing of an autonomous Jewish region within that, and it's a place where Yiddish could live, because my grandfather cared greatly about the language and, and the cultural tradition, and had no illusions that it would remain as an intrinsic part of American Jewry, knew that it was going to disappear here. And so was thinking, was impressed by, well, here is someone offering us fertile soil to continue growing uh, Yiddish identity, Yiddish culture. They would get together with the circle that he had co constantly corresponded with and uh, collaborated with. This is a photo with the Chalyatstere, the gang, that Opatasha worked very intimately for him in almost all their publications. Uh, there was a contribution from him. Second from the left is uh, Markish, uh, who ended up in uh, Soviet Union and was always trying to convince Opatasha to make the move there. He was a poet, a playwright, was one of the founding members or appointed to the Jewish Anti-Fascist Committee. And actually, in, as happened in the Soviet Union in uh, 1946, he won the Stalin Prize for his contributions to the state. And uh, by 1952, he was executed along with all of the other Yiddish uh, intelligentsia, what's called the Night of the uh, Murdered Poets. This was in 1934. Uh, it was in the Soviet Union. Uh, and it was the conference of Soviet Yiddish writers. Opatosha just came as a guest to that. And you can see the, the, the close relationship we, he had with Peretz. Markus seems to almost have his head on Opatosha's shoulder. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. you it? Yeah, I did. It's so, so cute. cute. <laughs> Everybody else so formal looking, Soviet looking straight ahead. Then clearly, when the all of Yiddish writers and were slowly murdered, and these people that he had been having correspondence with for thirty years, and he would write his weekly letter to them, <clears throat> and the letter would come back, and it would say, "No such person, no such address." at the same address for Markish or for uh, the other ones. And then he knew it was, you know, uh, it was over what was going on. One of the things that amazed me about him is that after the war, when the calamity of what had happened and the disappearance of his natural audience, combined with what happened to Yiddish and the Yiddishists in the Soviet Union uh, not that much later, uh, and the disappearance of those dreams as a place, that he never seemed to lose his enthusiasm and belief in the importance of its continuation.